Well, hi, everybody. Um, thanks for tuning in today. Today is Monday, December 9th. And I thought that I'd take a few minutes and talk to you guys about what's called an exit clearance. Um, but before I get into that, I just wanted to mention real quick that uh, May and I are very appreciative. Um, maybe two weeks ago, I hit the magical thousand subscriber mark on my little YouTube channel here. And then in the last two weeks or so, it's grown into 3,000 plus subscribers. So thank you guys very much. Uh, we appreciate that. And we appreciate all your comments that you make too. 99% of them are very nice and positive. And then the 1% that are, I call interesting. <laughs> and to celebrate, if you hit the subscribe button today, uh, we're offering those for half price. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, an exit clearance. What's an exit clearance and why do I need one? Well, I'm going to Vietnam on the 18th in nine days. And I have resided in the Philippines for more than six months consecutively. So anyone that has been here for six months or over, before you're allowed to leave the Philippines, you have to produce a document when you're leaving that says you're not on the Philippines blacklist. Now, what puts you on a blacklist? I don't know. I don't know if you... I don't know. I guess if you've been arrested or jumped bail or maybe somebody reported you because you didn't pay a hotel bill. Um, to be honest with you, I don't know what gets you on that thing, but I'm pretty sure there's nothing I'm doing that's going to get me there. But you still have to have the document. And I've been in the country more than six months. So what's the big deal? You go down to immigration and you pay $10 because that's the price for it. It's 500 pesos, 10 bucks American. And they give you... You know, they do your fingerprints and they give you the exit clearance. The challenge for me is that I live in Dumaguete. And we have a nice little immigration office here in Dumaguete. They're awesome. Every time I go in to renew my visa or, or take care of that kind of business and pay my money, they're real quick, they're real friendly, they're real efficient. But one thing you can't get in Dumaguete is an exit clearance. For some reason... I have to go to either Cebu or Manila or one of the satellite stations that does them. So that means a day trip for me. Now, a couple videos ago, I showed you my apartment. And I mentioned about my Christmas tree. And this was May's first Christmas tree, maybe, and my girlfriend, if this is the first time you're watching. And I asked May what she wanted for Christmas. And she said, I don't want you to buy me thing. Um, but I would like to go to Cebu with you when you go get your exit clearance. And I would like to go to a water park, is what she said. And what she really meant was, I later found out, it's an aquarium that's down there in Cebu, close to where we're to immigration. And I said, yeah, sure, no problem. We'll, we'll make a little vacation out of it. So here we go. We're going to, May and I are on our way to Cebu. There's three ways that I can get there. I can take a plane, and I can take a ferry, or I can take the bus. And I guess if I had a car, I could drive. <coughs> Sorry, I am still fighting this friggin' cough, but I got medicine for it this week, and it should be gone. May, by the way, is in bed right now. She's been in bed for the last four days. She's got the same crap I had last month, and it's hit her a lot harder than it hit me. She's had off and on fevers, um, we got out today for a little bit. I took her out to lunch. We went to Hypermark, got a few groceries, and now she's in there zonked out. But she's going to be fine. Took her to the doctor, got her, her meds. Uh, the fever's calming down, but she's resting up. And a uh, uh, poor thing. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. I am going to Vietnam to see my, my friend Gary. And I'm taking a vacation from my vacation. <laughs> I think it's important that no matter where you are, uh, whether you're in your home country right now, in your hometown, or it's me sitting here in Dumaguete enjoying my life, spending my time with May, um, I think it's good just to get out of the routine and sort of get out of your comfort zone a little bit. And so once a year, I try to, uh, I, in fact, I don't try, I do. I just get out of the country. Last year, I went to Bali. And this year, I'm going to go to Vietnam. 
And, you know, whenever I go on vacation, I feel this, you know, kind of anticipation and excitement because I know I'm going to be experiencing a new place. I'm going to see a culture I've never seen before. Uh, there's going to be some fresh challenges there. There are going to be different foods, uh, different experiences, adventures, mishaps, disasters, all the things that go along with it. But I think the most important part, at least for me personally, is every time that I've left, after about three weeks to 30 days, I just can't wait to get back. I really, you know, I get a little stagnant around here sometime. And even though things are going well, I get a little bit disgruntled for, I don't know, maybe I just go old man syndrome. But whenever I bug out of town, I really appreciate that what I do have. And so I think that's the cherry that's on top of this little Sunday. But once again, I digress. The exit clearance. We have to go to Cebu. So Cebu is about six hours away. And my plan was to get on the bus at about four o'clock so that we would arrive in Cebu approximately 10 o'clock, get to immigration there at about 11 o'clock, and then figure we're going to be there until five o'clock when they close. Because you don't know. You could get in and out an hour or you could be the last guy standing. It doesn't, I don't know. So it reminds me of the old joke. If you ever want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> so we had planned to leave at four o'clock. And I think we limped onto the bus at about 645. And um, May was actually starting to come down with the fever. And I had said, you know, babe, you don't need to go. We can always go back and I'll take you to this aquarium thing. She just gave me that look like, are you crazy? So I stopped right there. I said, okay, just go. You'll be fine. <sighs> so we got on the bus. No big deal. Nice bus ride in. No mishaps. No problems. Actually kind of fun. Um, May slept. I slept. And the scenery is always kind of pretty. We got to... Subu, just about when planned, you caught a grab, taxi, if you will, car, grab car, went to J Mall, which is where the immigration office is in Subu. And this time, because I had done this before last year when I went to Bali, and last year I did not go prepared with pictures and photocopies and all this hoo-ha that they require to get this little clearance. This time I was ready for them. I had my pictures already done, I had the photocopies ready, I had it in an envelope. And so when I marched in there with May, I filled out the form and I hand, proudly handed it over to him. And the guy directed me across the hallway to do my fingerprints. Um, went over to do the fingerprints. The guy that was there saw a letter that I had just had a check done. So didn't even need the fingerprints. He signed off on it and I said, well, this is cool. Things are going smooth. This is awesome. Uh, May and I are going to spend the night there. We're going to stay at a hotel right next to J-Mall. And in the morning, we're going to go to her aquarium. And then we're going to come back to the hotel and pack up and jump on a bus and go home. That was the program. So we're at the immigration office. And they sent me back over to receiving line, which is where I would turn in all the said documents, pay my money, my 500 pesos, and they stamp my passport and away we go. It was three o'clock when I got to the receiving window. And when I got there, I smiled and I handed him my passport and all my stuff that I, I got, my stamps and I'm approved and the guy sent me over. And the kid behind, I call him a kid, he's about 25 years old, real nice looking young man, very small, about five foot four, very neat, and he had a very kind look about him. And he sort of sadly pointed to this little sign that was plastered on the window that you couldn't see till you got to the window. And it said, we are accepting no more groups after 1 p.m. And it was three. <laughs> and when I looked at it, I said, well, I'm not a group. I'm just one guy. 
And he goes, well, that's what that means. A group is a person and we can't help you until tomorrow. And I didn't say anything. I didn't get mad, but I just kind of went like that. And it was real. It wasn't an acting job. It felt like someone just took the air out of me. It's like, man, we were on the bus and that went okay. And we got the grab and that went okay. And I had all my documents and that went good. I went across the hallway. They just stamped me through. No big malarkey like I went through last time. We come back over and now the brakes have been put on. And all I can think of is I'm going to have to show back up here tomorrow at 8 when they open. And God only knows when I'll be done. Because you literally can go there at 8 o'clock and walk out at 5. Um, and when the, he, the, the kid looked at me and he said, I keep calling him a kid. The young man looked at me and he said, when is your flight, sir? And what he was alluding to was, when am I leaving the country? And I picked up on it and I lied to him. <laughs> Flat out lied. I looked at him and I said, tomorrow, I'm leaving the country. And he said, what time? I said, in the morning. <laughs> and he goes, are you going on vacation? He goes, no, he says, where are you going? I said, Vietnam. And he says, is it for vacation? And I said, medical. And he said, give me your passport. God bless him. <laughs> so, old Polly was using his head that time. I don't like to lie, but, you know, puts one more passport. So the bottom line is, he took it. He was very nice. He was very gracious. And I, like I said, I could tell he was kind. And I think the fact that I didn't give him any heat and I just looked like what I am. I was just an old guy that was tired. And now I, was, I got bad news and I had to come back tomorrow and, He's got the power to either let me make my flight or miss my flight. So, like I said, that's kind of the Filipino culture. There. They're good people. And so now we've got it, and May and I are heading off to finally get some dinner. We have a bite to eat. We check into the hotel, and... Awesome little hotel called Toyoko. It's right next to the J Mall. And May's fever just goes blasting through the ceiling. And I'm really concerned for her because she is just hot as, as an oven. So long story short, we, we, we make it through the night. I, I go down to the, we brought a bunch of stuff with us. I always bring Tylenol and aspirin and stomach stuff and blah 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 just in case and so got her loaded up with some with some fever reducers and some pain relievers and in the morning it was uh, she was still feeling lousy so I went downstairs and I got a bite to eat you know I was going to try to convince her to just shine it on and We'll either fly home if she's feeling that bad, or we'll grab the bus and go home. And when I got back to the room, miraculously, her fever had broke. And she was sitting up all dressed and perky and happy. And um, so we went to the aquarium. And we had a great time. She got to take, you know, 6,492 selfies, which was the whole point. We didn't look at very many fish. It was just her going like this, you know. That's, that's the whole point. And um, we came back to the hotel, checked out, and there was a typhoon happening up above Manila. And we were in Cebu, which is below it. And wouldn't you know, we caught the tail end of that typhoon and they canceled the bus. <laughs> I got news for you. The way it was raining... There's no way that I would have got on that bus anyway if they were letting us go. And I looked at May and she was white as a sheet. So we checked right back into the hotel. <laughs> and 
<laughs> it's okay. Got her upstairs. Got a new room. Spent the night. Um, there was a bathtub in the hotel. And May had never been in a bath before. And so she did about 17,000 more selfies. <laughs> When she got up to the room, she slept for a while. The fever broke again, and then she just had a ball. It was, it was, you know, that's just the coolest thing. It's things that I take for granted and have had all my life. And here's May has never had an opportunity just to soak in a nice hot tub, which really makes you feel better when you're feeling lousy. And she had the bubbles going and the was clicking the pictures and everything else. And the next day, the rain had cleared up. We went down for our breakfast. We went to catch the nine o'clock bus. We missed it. <laughs> we got on the 10 o'clock bus and the 10 o'clock bus rolled out about 1045. So other than the delays, the small delays and the little Little, little nuances as far as time and all that, the little bit of drama that we had down at the immigration office. Um, you know what an exit clearance is now. It's a document that, and this is for the guys that are coming here or just got here. But I think the gist of the message is, is that just be prepared for the unexpected. Expect the unexpected, I think, is the, the proper way to say it. Um, if it can go wrong, it will. In other words, when I walked up to the window at three o'clock and the kid, the, I keep calling him a kid, the young man pointed to the little sign that said no one knew it after one o'clock. It really didn't surprise me because that's just how things go. They go here without a lot of fanfare or announcement. They just kind of tell you the bad news at that time. Um, so it didn't shock me. If you're going to do something like this in the Philippines and always allow extra time and by all means, make sure you pack a lot of patience <laughs> and keep a smile on your face. Um, May is doing a lot better. Uh, she's in bed right now. We got out today for a little bit. And again, we just really want to thank you guys for subscribing. And we really want to thank you dearly. It really, really means a lot. May's really happy because people have been writing some really kind words about her. Um, I, I had described in a previous video about this being her first Christmas tree. And now it's been her first time soaking in a bathtub. And uh, we really appreciate the humanity, I think, that, that you guys express towards us. And... Um, I just want to wish you guys well until we chat with you next time. I'll be certainly going to, I'm going to do another video before I bug out of the Philippines. And then I'm going to do my best to vlog as much when I'm in Vietnam. And kind of keep you guys surprised as to what antics we're doing over there. Okay? All right, guys. I'll see you next time.